Hello, this is Jimmy Landry, the Artist Relations Manager for Cakewalk, and this is just a quick and casual video to go along with my multi-part series on making cost-effective acoustic treatment for your production studio, which you can find on the cakewalk.com blog. I'm going to walk through some of the steps here that I took to make these panels. So here I was just creating the box where the fiberglass lays. Uh, I made them with 2-inch screws and 4-inch pine wood. And here I'm just sanding and creating the frame that goes over the actual box. So this is just laying the frame on top of the, of the box. And that will be attached and there'll be an overlay which you'll see there around the perimeter where the fiberglass will set in. So you can see the overlay right there around the perimeter on the inside. And then I just stained and polyurethaned the outside of it to make it look a little better. I used an all-in-one poly and stain. Here I am stapling in the, the fabric that I bought online. So the frame's upside down there. And this is just laying the fiberglass into the box. As you can see, the overlay, which I was talking about, kind of stops the fiberglass from going too far. And then after that, I used a heavy-duty stapler to go around the perimeter to make sure that the fiberglass is set in and it stays set. So to save some money here, I wrapped the back. Instead of using the acoustic fabric on the back side of it, I just used a, uh, a two-ply painter's tarp from Home Depot. And this is what the panel looks like at the end of the day. You can see it's pretty light. Here I am setting in screws. There are two inch screws going in so that the panel sets out from the wall about an inch and a half. There's a four inch screw coming out of the wall that I used. And then that the two inch screws on the sides that I'm pointing out there will stop the panel from going up against the wall. That way the frequencies will both hit the front side of the panel and the back side of the panel. So this is what the studio looks like now with all the panels up on the walls. And there's the sound cloud over the mix position. And all the corners are knocked out in the room. And there's that inch and a half air gap that I was talking about before, which allows the frequencies to go in between the wall and the back side of the panels. That's created with an inch and a half screw coming out of the back of each panel. And that goes for all the panels around the room. And the room to begin with is really not a great mixing environment. It's a square room, which is pretty much worst case scenario for mixing. So everyone that I talked to who know a lot more about this than me, they all said the same thing, which was to take care of the corners and try to knock those out as best as possible. So at the end of the day, this was a very tough project, but well worth it. I can't even imagine how much it would have cost me to purchase 18 panels and have them shipped to me. And my price tag total for all the materials was in between $550 and $650. So if you're like me, I'm definitely not an expert on this stuff, but I just figured I'd go for it and roll my sleeves up. And I recommend it to anyone. If you have any questions at all, you can go to the Cakewalk forum and I will be monitoring the thread on the three-part series that I made on the Cakewalk blog about creating all these panels. And I'll be able to uh, hopefully give you some direction and answer some questions to the best of my capability on this. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope this finds you well. Bye-bye.